All right. Good morning, church. Good morning. Yeah, very awesome, very awesome. It's actually so cool to be saying good morning church and still having people come in and being seated. That's kind of cool. That's awesome. And so we are so glad that you guys are here today. Uh, This is the day, the scripture says, that the Lord has made. And our response is to what? That's right. That's right. Rejoice and be glad in it. We're glad. I, I've, I've enjoyed talking to some of you folks as we've come in. I can't see your faces for sure, but I think you're smiling. I can tell. And so, uh, and those of you online this morning, I can't see your faces either, but you can still let us know that you're here. Uh, make sure you do that. Um, if you just say hello this morning on Facebook Live, if you do that, if you go to catlinchurch.com and click connect, also let us know that you're here. Engage with us this morning as we do this together. We will say it until we're sick of it, but it's true. One church, many locations. And so we're, t- we're together worshiping with one another here and in various locations. We're grateful for this morning. Uh, this morning also, not only are we going to have live preaching and live worship, but also our, our, uh, this morning is the first time we have uh, our children's church, kindergarten through fifth grade. We'll be meeting the entirety downstairs, so Ethan gets to finally work. He, gets to, he, he actually gets to do some work today, so we're excited about that in both services today. And so really, really excited about everything that's going to happen this morning. And so as, as we get going... A uh, couple things, again, if you would, even if you're here local uh, in the room, you can, you can go to catlinchurch.com on your device, let us know that you're here, just click connect, that'd be fantastic. But one of the things I believe with all of my heart, and I think you believe it too, is that worship is the language of the Christian. Worship is our language um, to the Lord and to the world of, of what, what we believe about him this morning. And so I was teasing a little bit, but I said, if you sit up front, you also have to sing loud. But I'm just going to say, if you're here today, let's sing loud. Because in a way, for four months, it, was, it felt like it was taken away from us, this opportunity to worship together. Well, today we have the opportunity to continue to do that and be reminded that we are together and worship him. And so uh, we're going to sing a song, the very first song, uh, My Feet Are On The Rock great song. If this doesn't wake you up, I don't know what will. Uh, Great song. I encourage us to to sing it, to get into it, to meet it online. I encourage you to do the same, but also let it be a reminder that in a time, I mean, we're wearing masks and we're going through crazy seasons and we are in a world of complete upheaval, yet we as believers believe that we can stand on solid ground with Jesus. And so if we believe that this morning, I want us to sing, and I want us to clap. I want us to amen from time to time, and I want us to express our hearts to God and the joy that we have in being together. I'm going to pray for us, and then we're going to worship together. Father, I ask that you would bless this time as we, as we do this. Would you bless our, our practice to be ready for today? Would you bless the technology that we lean into to get the word out? Would you give us a spirit of knowledge, knowing that we are together. Those of us who are together today, it is so sweet to be with one another, but that we're also together with those on the other side of the screen, and maybe even on the other side of the world in some cases. And and Father, I ask that you would help us have this, this incredible sense that when we stand with you, we stand on a solid rock. That doesn't mean that storms aren't coming. That doesn't mean that things will be easy. But God, you don't change, you don't shift, you don't move, you you are the same. And Father, we need that. You have gotten us this far, and we know you will continue to do the same. May we, your people today, share our hearts with you in worship, and may you be pleased with what you hear in Jesus' name. Amen. If if you choose this morning to uh, to stand, you can do that uh, as we worship together. Let's do that. The winds they try to shake me. I will not be moved. My feet are on the rock. I can feel the waters rise. I can hear the howling lights that call me. They won't hold me down. My feet are on the rock. And I feel my hope about to break. I will cling to your. 
your unchanging grace. Let the waters come and the earth give way. I'll be dancing in the rain. My feet are on the rock. And I can see the morning light. I can feel the joy on the horizon. Here my faith is found. I stand on solid ground. And I feel my hope about to break. I will cling to your unchanging grace. Let the waters come and the earth give way. I'll be dancing in the rain. My feet are on the rock. On Christ's solid rock, I stand all underground is sinking sand. So strong your feet and clap your hands. Our feet are on the rock. On Christ's solid rock, I stand all underground is sinking sand. So strong your feet and clap your hands. Our feet are on the rock. On Christ's solid rock, I stand all underground is sinking sand. So strong your feet and clap your hands. Our feet are on the rock. And I feel my hope about to break. I will bring to your unchanging grace. Let the waters come and the earth give way. I'll be dancing in the rain. When I feel my hope about to break, I will bring to your unchanging grace. Let the waters come and the earth give way. I'll be dancing in the rain. My feet are on the rock. My feet are on the rock. My feet are on the rock. It's so good to sing with you guys. In, uh, in Matthew chapter 7, at the end of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, he says, if you put these words of mine into practice, it's like you are building your house on the rock. And that's such a, an important reminder that we trust not only in Jesus, first and foremost in him, but we trust in what he told us and how he taught us, and we live our lives that way. And there are some songs that are, are a little more like the Old Testament Psalms, that they're, they're just praise. They're, they're not just singing truths of Scripture, but it's, I mean, it's all truth, but it's, it's praise to God. It's like a, a repeating and, and just praise to God. And then there's other songs that we sing, like the two we're about to sing, that you could take just about any little parts of this verse or chorus, you can match it up with a Scripture and God's truth, and what Jesus teaches. And so as we sing these songs, we're, we're reminded of hope in Jesus, uh, but we're reminded that this is, this is what we believe. This, this is what it's about, that he's been crucified for us. He's been resurrected. That God is almighty. He's our creator. So as we sing this morning, let us uh, not just sing praise, though we need to do that, but let our, our hearts and our minds be engaged that this is true. So let's, uh, let's continue to sing this morning. Our Father everlasting, the all creating one, God Almighty. Through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again, for I believe in the name of Jesus. Our judge and our defender, suffer and crucify, forgiveness is in you. Descended into darkness, you rose in glorious light, forever seated high. I believe in God our Father. 
believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection. And we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe in you. I believe you rose again. I believe that Jesus Christ. I believe in the virgin birth. I believe in the saints' communion and in your holy church. I believe in the resurrection when Jesus comes again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. For I believe in the name of Jesus. For God so loved the whole wide world sent his only son to die for me arms spread wide for the whole wide world his arms spread wide for where mine should be jesus changed my destiny for God so loved the whole wide world, sent His only Son to die for me. Arms spread wide for the whole wide world, His arms spread wide where mine should be. Jesus changed my day. We thank you that we could be here together to sing. We thank you for that freedom. I pray that as we continue to worship this morning, that we be reminded that you're a God who's in control. Whatever we came in with today, whatever we're watching online with today, whatever we're struggling with today, that you are a good God and that you see a big picture that we can't see. So my prayer this morning is that we be comforted that we'd stay strong and be reminded of your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you sing with us? Amazing love that welcomes me the kindness of mercy that 
bought with blood wholeheartedly my soul undeserving God you're so good God you're so good God you're so
during this time of communion, uh, anytime during the video, uh, you can take communion. And again, just uh, you want to peel the top part first and then the bottom part. But anytime during this video, if you'd like to take communion, we'll celebrate that just as, as we feel ready. I've been very grateful during this season that we've been able to continue to celebrate communion in creative ways together, and I'm grateful for that reminder of who Jesus is and what he's done for us. This morning, if you're uh, watching online or right here, if you guys would get your Bibles and, and turn to Matthew chapter 7, that's actually where we're going to camp out today, encourage you to do that. Um, also, uh, just I want to throw it out there, not as any pressure, but just continued uh, reminder, if, if you uh, consider this to be your church home and you have opportunity to give, you uh, can do that uh, either in the box on your way out, or you can do that online. Uh, you can go to catlinchurch.com and click give. It can share some of those things, or simply text 84321, any amount. Uh, and so you can just kind of partner with us that way. You guys have been rock uh, solid and rock stars during this time. I encourage you to continue uh, to just stand with us uh, during this time in that way. Uh, also, this morning, especially if you're online, we did this for about a month early on, um, but, but we'd encourage you, if you're watching online right now, is at some point, go ahead and get a Sunday morning selfie and, and go ahead and, and bring that into Facebook or send that in. Just let us know, again, just visual reminder that we're together in this. I uh, hope I don't get in trouble and don't scare them off, but this morning we had an opportunity, I had an opportunity to ask a question that I had, had really wondered about the entire season of quarantine, because this is how deep and, well, deep I go, is this morning I got to see my buddy Bruce, and he's over here, and I said, Bruce, man, it's so good to see you and all that, and he doesn't know what I'm saying, this is just off the cuff, but, but I said, Bruce, I got to know four months of being in quarantine, and you're watching online, I got to know, 
do you still wear a tie when you're watching online? And his answer was yes. And so, very good. And so, I, I have no visual proof. I'm just going to take him in his word. But, uh, but it is so good to be together. Thank you for the opportunity to, to be able, again, to be able to preach both here present and also online. And so, I need you to help me a little bit this morning. Just like last week, I really, I, I feel like I'd do better if you guys are engaged with me. And so, if you know how this phrase ends, I just love to hear it. Is the old saying goes that hindsight is... 2020. Online, you probably didn't hear him say that, but that's right. Hindsight, they say, is 2020. The ability to look back over time and be able to see things you didn't see before, get a perspective that maybe we had missed. Our, our vision's pretty good looking backwards. And maybe it's a coincidence, maybe it's not. But anyone recognize what year we're in? 2020. Man, what a year for perspective, right? I mean, the last six months or seven months or so have absolutely uh, rocked our perspective and really allowed us to see some things in some new ways. And one of the things I've heard during this season, kind of a perspective thing, is people say, well, hey, look, let's look at the bright side, right? At least it didn't happen during the winter, right? Or at least this didn't happen during the winter and we can be out and all of those things. But, but as it's gotten hot... We've kind of forgotten that, and now we start to say, man, it's hot. Man, it's hot. I can't wait until it cools off. And so I don't know, how many of you in, in here, you would say you're, you're like winter people. You love winter. Okay, how many of you say spring? Okay, summer, fall. I, I kind of thought fall, maybe online, again, just, you know, which is your favorite one? But just in case any of you right now find yourself missing the winter, a little bit nostalgic about the winter maybe this will help cure us <laughs> How many of you just needed that? You just kind of needed that laugh. Very good. Is I hope that we have cured anybody from wanting and looking forward to winter for a little bit longer. And if it weren't such a serious time in our life, I would submit that that video ought to be in the running for the official video of 2020. Amen. I'm like, that just feels 2020. Right? That, that everything we try, we just kind of feel like we, we're one step ahead and then two steps back and that we're having trouble getting traction. And, and I think a lot of us can look at that. I mean, that video is hilarious, mostly because it didn't happen to us. But I think a lot of us could relate. Looking at the last six, seven months, maybe even longer for some of us, there are probably some in this room who are just saying, I just wish for a second I could get some traction. I just wish we felt like we're making a little bit of progress. I just kind of wish that everything didn't feel so insecure in my life. And, and, and there always seems to be something new. It was, you know, first it was the virus, and then there was the murder of hornets. And I think they've kind of, you know, I don't know, maybe they've moved their way. I heard buffalo gnats. I don't know if that's even a thing, but that's pretty gnarly. I mean, just everything in this, it just like seems like it keeps coming. And it's not always out there. 
I think all of us can recognize some of it's in here too. Some of it's our own lives. Some of it, we're, we're facing that ourselves that, that maybe we thought, man, we were getting ahead with our health. We were going to live healthy. We're going to get healthy. And, and, and then two, three, four days, two, three, four weeks in, well, we, you know, get off track. Or this is going to be the year that we were going to get financially healthy. We were going to make good financial choices. We are going to save and we were going to, you know, uh, get some money in the bank and, and, and all that. And this was going to be the year and then... And then it didn't, not so far. Or maybe this is the year we found ourselves that there was a relationship that we, we've kind of come to believe that there's this relationship in our life and it is the thing. This relationship is the thing I can anchor my life to. But then suddenly that relationship seems shaky. Or maybe, you know, it's a parent relationship or as a parent, it's a, a relationship with a child that just feels a little bit off and we can't seem to get traction. Or maybe... We just come in, or maybe we're watching today, and we just say, you know what? Life seems like it's pretty slippery. I just can't get much traction. If only I had a better foundation. And this morning, what we're going to do is, is, as we're in the second week of our series called Now What? Kind of looking back at where we've been, taking a peek at where we are, and trying to figure out what does that mean in, in where we're going. This morning, I'm going to make the case that it's possible that we as a nation, we as a culture, and sometimes even we as Christians have settled for some insufficient foundations, for some slippery foundations in our lives. And I think the last six to seven months in many ways has, has helped expose that some of those foundations have some cracks in them, that maybe we need a better foundation. And so today, if you feel like you're slipping or sliding or barely hanging on, this message is for you. We can call it 2020, a, a message of perspective to be able to look back and maybe see where we've, where we've placed our hope and our trust and build our lives in places and ways maybe we shouldn't and be able to see a better move forward. And so in Matthew chapter 7, uh, we're going to hear the words of Jesus. If you haven't turned there, you can, and we're going to be looking at verses 24 through 27. But what we're going to find here, I just want to go ahead and give you kind of the main idea, even before we hear the text, here's the main idea, here's what I think you're going to find from Jesus, is that he is going to tell us that the condition of our lives is tied directly to the quality of our foundation. That the, the, the condition, the security of our lives will be uh, uh, tied directly to the quality of the foundation on which we build our lives. Listen to what Jesus says, his words, Sermon on the Mount. Starting in verse 24, Jesus says, Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. That person is like a person who builds a house on a solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because... It's built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is, is foolish. Like a person who builds a house on sand, when the rains and the floods come and winds beat against that house, it will collapse. It will collapse with a mighty crash. And so this morning, just for a moment, just going to give you time to think about this question. You can, you can jot it and answer down if you want to. But just give you a second, online here as well, is are you building your life on a firm or a faulty foundation? I'm not going to share this with anybody. But if you really had to, to guess today, again, online as well, don't, don't type it in. This is for you. But coming in this morning, and if you are truly honest, would you say that, that you have been up to this point building your life on a firm foundation? Or a faulty foundation. See, it's an important question to ask because Jesus tells us that any foundation other than Himself, um, any other foundation, or, or put it another way, no foundation other than Himself will last. Listen again to what He says. Anyone who hears my teaching, hears my word, and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come, the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. 
I, uh, you know, we didn't really, many of us didn't really get to take vacations this year, and and that's okay, just, you know, save up for the next one or whatever. Some of us did, and that's kind of cool too, and I get to enjoy kind of watching you guys take those trips, is is that some people have been able to go to the beach, and and I'll be honest, I'm a beach guy, I like the beach, I love the ocean, I don't actually like being in the ocean because sharks. I mean, that's just, that's the, that's the thing, is that that's my, my fear, but I love looking at the water, and I love building sandcastles. I'm not good at it. This video is not actually from me, but you can watch it and listen to me, but I, I grabbed this, and it's one of my favorite things to do at the beach, is to build sandcastles. So just take the time. You can go ahead and shoot that video up there if you want to, sandcastle, if it's in there. Um, is, uh, is I think it's fun. You know, you get the kids together, and you get the buckets, and you get the shovels, and you get all those things. I love the process of building a sandcastle. It's a lot of work, but the crazy thing about sandcastles is we spend all that time on them, and we know from the very moment that we start building it, it will not last. We know that from the very first time, from the very first moment we start to build it, no matter how big or small or elaborate, is we know that with time and with wind and with the the, the water coming back in, we know that all of that work eventually is going to be lost because sandcastles are not able to last. I mean, I've never, not once have I ever seen anyone build a sandcastle and then bring their luggage and say, I'm moving in. Uh, This is my permanent residence. Nobody does that. No one would build their life on a sandcastle because they know that eventually it's going to do that. They know eventually there's the moment where it's just going to kind of give up the ghost and be back in the ocean. And that's really what Jesus is telling us in this passage. He says, we must not, we can't afford to build our lives on lesser foundations. He says that sometimes, and it's true, is sometimes we, though, are guilty of building our lives or building our lives around things that just won't last. And I think the year 2020, hindsight, has shown us some of those If you really think about it, think about the last year, the things that were so important, so much a part of our life, so 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 integrated into our life that that have either gone away or or certainly been reduced. I'll be truthful that the whole COVID thing did not really get my attention. It didn't really pop up on my radar all that much until I heard that baseball was going to be postponed for two weeks and then potentially canceled for the rest of the year. Suddenly it had my attention. This is serious right? For me, it was baseball. For others, it was March madness when it got canceled, or now it's known as March sadness. Because, hey, our sports, our sports, all of a sudden we build our lives in many ways and our routines around sports, and they were, they were taken away. And that's connected to the next one is entertainment and entertainers. Sadly, for some reason in our culture, and I don't know if it's true in the world, but in our culture, for some reason, we give an inordinate amount of, of time, attention, and, and, and listening in our, our minds to people who are celebrities. We tend to listen to celebrities. We tend to follow celebrities. We tend to be, what are, what are they doing? What are they saying? Let me, let me be like celebrities. And then all of a sudden, the movie's shut down this year. Some of our favorite TV shows uh, either won't come back or won't come back for some time. And, and we realize, wow, we've built our life on and around to be entertained. And then suddenly this year, entertainment in many ways has gone away. Not, not completely. But, you know, so you have sports and you have entertainment, you know, you have politics. I'll, I'll be careful here, but let's be honest is that our, our, our political system has been failing for some time, but we have definitely seen in the last half year or so that, man, there's, without, without an act of God and a miracle from heaven, uh, I, I think our, our political system is pretty broken. I think we've seen it. The division and the politics just aren't working, and so many people have put their faith and their hope and their trust in a political party, and, man, where's that getting us? Or, or maybe it's, you know, we put our trust and we put our hope and we put our foundation on our financial stability, right? You know, I've, I've saved and I've worked and I've worked hard and I've spent wisely and I've put money in the bank and I've invested well and then the stock market and then COVID and all of this. And we look and we think, that was supposed to be my retirement. That was supposed to be my nest egg. That was supposed to get me through. Now what am I going to do? 
or, or our, we put our focus on our health, or we put our, all of our stock in our relationships, or, or somehow we feel like the busier we are in our schedules and all those things, and we look back at 2020, and every one of those has been exposed to be faulty foundations. Probably none of those are bad things by themselves. I don't even think Jesus would say they are bad things, but they're sandcastles. They're never adequate for us to build our lives on. And that's what he wants us to hear, is that all of them show cracks in the foundation. Why? Because a poor foundation will always reveal itself in the middle of the worst storms. We know that, many of us know that with our buildings and our houses and things like that, but but, but we recognize that poor foundations are always going to be exposed under the greatest pressure. I saw that in Honduras in 2004. I was on a mission trip, a work trip there in in Honduras. It was about a 10-day trip. And early on in the week, there was a couple there, a husband and wife, that said, hey, Chris, while we're here, would it be okay if we renewed our vows? There were about 30 of us on the trip there, and they said, it would be really cool to have a good portion of our church family. If we would just renew our vows, would you kind of officiate that? I said, well, sure. If we have some time and a free evening this week, towards the end, we'll go ahead and do that. Great. I said, you plan it. And so they did, and, and they're kind of on the compound where we, we live most of the time. Um, there had been a, a, a deck, kind of an overlook deck that had recently been built to, well, overlook kind of this hill, this cliff, and kind of be able to see the area uh, that, that, um, that we're kind of staying in. And it was cool. Lots of times, several of us would go out there, have a cup of coffee in the morning or something, and just, just kind of get ready for the day. And so this couple, they said, hey, we've decided we're going to have our vow renewal um, on the deck, on the lookout, or on the overlook deck. We're going to do that. And hey, Chris, about 7 o'clock, said, that'd be fine. And I was not running late, but I happened to be the last one there. As I'm walking from the dorm area to this deck, I see all 29 other people standing on or sitting on this overlook deck. And it was kind of cool, picturesque. I was stopping to get a picture. When I, got, I started to look at the picture, I also started to look at all of the support beams underneath said uh, porch, underneath the, the lookout. And I, I'm not a bright guy. I'm not real good with those sorts of things. But I thought, you know what? It's brand new. It probably shouldn't have cracks in it. <laughs> it those beams probably shouldn't be bowed out, right? And thankfully, I decided to kind of think out loud and said something to one of the, the employees there, one of the guys who actually worked there. And I said, does that look right to you? And his eyes get real big. And he just says, kind of in a firm but quiet voice, he goes, everybody off. Everybody get off the deck. And so they start to get off, and he kind of takes a breath. He goes, now half of you can get back on. He goes, but that thing was not, he said, that thing is never going to hold all 30 of you because it wasn't built to. It wasn't meant to. And when we had all those people on there, it was starting to show the signs of being an insufficient foundation. And bad things could have happened very shortly if we, if we hadn't seen it. And that's the imagery Jesus is offering from a spiritual standpoint. He's saying those are physical truths, but they also have spiritual truth. Is that when the storms come, when the pressure's on, when the world turns upside down, if we have built our lives on things other than Jesus, there are going to be moments where they are going to crack and they are going to fail and, they're going, and, and, and we're going to find ourselves on, in, on insufficient foundations. And it's important for us to hear this because sometimes we can come in or we can watch online and we can say, that's true. Chris, you're 100% right. Today, I recognize my life has been um, messed up. I, I recognize that I've been building on the wrong foundation. I've been chasing the wrong pursuits, the wrong priorities. And some people would say, that's true. I, I get that. But there are other people who would listen to this and say, well, I don't get it. My life's doing fine. It's, it's going great. I have built my life on, and I've built my life around those things, and things are great. Things are great, and Jesus might just say, yeah, they are. But wait until the storm comes, because storms will reveal our foundations. Things are great until our health changes, right? Things are great until the economy tanks. Things are great until the relationship gets rocky or the injury comes, or someone gets sick, or we lose someone close to us. It is in those moments the quality of our foundation comes to light. The storms are coming, Jesus says, and he tells us these things to warn us, to let us know ahead of time, don't 
build your life on insufficient foundations. He warns us. The question is, are we listening? My, my niece, she's, she's grown now. She has a couple of kids of her own, but I remember a story when she was probably five or six years old, living in the Kokomo, Indiana area, and for some reason, my older brother, uh, his daughter, and we're, we're there for a birthday party or something. I don't remember all the details, but she, again, she's five or six at the time. So we have a nice party, everybody's there, and she's very independent, and, and you know, it's a good time, but we're getting ready to leave, everybody's getting ready to leave, and my niece wants to, to bring their dog Moses, this great big boxer, you know, wants to bring him out to, to say goodbye to everybody, and somebody, a parent or somebody says, well, don't, don't do that, it's a big dog, if he gets excited, he pulls away, then you're going to have trouble controlling him, well, she totally ignored it. She totally ignored them and went ahead and put the collar on, put the leash on, walked Moses outside, and I happened to hear that somebody had told her that, so I thought, you know what, I'm 20 feet away, 30 feet away or so, but I'll just kind of say it quietly, hey, 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 just, you might want to put the dog back, um, they, they told you to do that, I don't want you to get in trouble, she goes, I'm fine, I'm like, I'm trying to help you, kid, I'm like, no, you really probably should, Moses could get away, and you know, you got that leash, and he could pull you over, I'm fine. Oh, really? You're, you're fine. Oh, yes, I'm fine. Uncle Twist. That's what she called me. Uncle Twist. Uncle Triss. She goes, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I go, you sure? You got this. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I gave her one more chance. I said, are you sure? I'm sure. She has her hand in that leash. The leash is one part of the leash is on her hand. One part of the leash is on the dog. So I go, here, Moses. Come here, boy. Come here, Moses. And he's like, yeah. And so he's just boom, takes off towards me, and she's hanging on to him like she's tubing on gravel. And she just won't let go. I mean, like, it's, she's okay now because her hair's long. You can't see the gravel in her scalp. It's okay. But I still feel a little badly that I did that. And everybody looks, but in that moment I go, guess you don't got it. And, and it, I mean, you know, and she still likes me, but I'm not saying you should do that, anyone. I'm not saying that was good maturity on my part. But here, here's the thing. In that moment, she was certain she was in control. Right until the moment she realized she was not in control. And Jesus would encourage us before the storm, before life comes at us, before our foundations are fully tested, let us recognize we are not in control. Politics are not in control. Finances are not in control. Our health is not in control. Sports and entertainment, not in control. And so God would say, Jesus would say, don't build your life on those things because when the storm comes, if you have, it will crash. So he tells us the warning. So he says, no foundation other than himself will last. However, he also says, no foundation built on him will fail. If we build our life and foundation on him, it will not fail. I love this. Verse 24 and 25. Jesus says, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes and torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. And what we need to understand here is something very, very, very important. Please hear me, church. Here and watching online is something we need to understand. Jesus makes it clear that whether we're Christian or non-Christian, doesn't matter, storms are coming. Right now we're tracking, what, another two hurricanes, one for the Texas area, one for Hawaii. We could just look, and so we can, because of technology and radars, we can say, storm is coming. And there may be people who look out their window and say, it's good, it's fine. Just give it a day. We can look and say, the storm's coming. Jesus lets us know that whether we're Christian or non-Christian, storms are coming. Following Jesus is not a get-out-of-jail-free card or get-out-of-problem-free card. But sometimes we think that, right? I mean, sometimes we have that idea that, you know, it's like, well, well God won't give me more than I can handle. Next time somebody says, God won't give you more than you can handle, I want you to very politely say, could you please show me where it says that in the Bible? Because it's not there. In fact, I find that Jesus routinely allows us to have more than we can handle. He will never allow us to face anything that he can't handle, but he will routinely allow life to, to feel out of control for us. But sometimes we do, we think if we're following Jesus, we shouldn't have storms. That's just not the way it works. 
I've shared before, but I'll never forget the, the moment of sitting in the hospital myself, just me, and, and this, a mom of one of the kids in my youth group. The kid was about 14, 15 years old, and he had gone in for emergency surgery that morning. Uh, they had found a mass in his intestine in his, in his inside somewhere, and, and they said, well, you know, we got to go take it. And so they went in, did surgery, and so I'm just, just she and I sitting there. I remember the surgeon coming out to meet with her, and his bedside manner was terrible because he, he, you know, he was talking about it, and he referred to it as malignant. And she said, wait a minute, what? He goes, oh, yeah, it's cancer. And I watched her just, just I mean, she was sitting down already, but I just kind of watched her slump. We sat there. I didn't know what to say. Doctor leaves. We sit there in quiet for a long time, and she finally looks at me. I'm begging that she doesn't ask me something I can't answer. And she looks at me, and she says, Chris, my son is a good boy. But what's the point of him going to youth group and going to church all that time if this is still going to happen to him? He's a Christian. He shouldn't have this storm. We, we think that way sometimes. But that's not what Jesus says at all. He says, if, if, you, if you're paying attention, storms are coming. They will come. The rains and storms will come. And so what we need to see is what he's doing is saying, when they come, will your life be built on a faulty foundation or on a firm foundation? He says, and if you've built your life, if we've built our lives on who Jesus is, what Jesus has done, and the words of Jesus um, through, his, through Scripture and through his disciples, if we listen to Jesus and his word, we will be building on a firm foundation. A life built on Jesus and his word will be able to withstand the storms of this life. We've got to make a move. One of the annoying things about making a move, about moving from one place to another, obviously there's the buying and the selling. There's the packing <laughs> and the unpacking. There, there are the boxes and the trucks and all those things. But somewhere there's a detail, and it's kind of important, but we sometimes forget, is this detail of going to the post office to make a change of address. That's right. We, and that the change of address is you go in and fill a form or you go online now and do that. And basically what it's communicating to the post office is, listen, I know I used to live over here. I know that used to be my address. I know that's where you used to send my mail. But I want to let you know I don't live there anymore. That's not my house anymore. That's not my address anymore. I've moved. I've changed locations. I've changed addresses. I live over here now. And so I want you to know I've changed locations. And spiritually speaking, I think Jesus would implore us to say, if you find and if I find and we find we've been building on a faulty foundation, is that we would have a change of address and that we would move the totality of our lives to the solid rock who is Jesus. What does it mean to build our life on the work and word of Jesus? Four things. First is we've got to know it. We've got to know what it says. We've got to know who Jesus is. And the best way to know who Jesus is is to open the words of Scripture and read about him. God would say, I think, if you want to know what God is like, look at Jesus. If you want to know what Jesus is, look, is like, look at Scripture. Go to the word Go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Go to the, the early writings of, of the New Testament and get to know Jesus for ourselves. Uh, if you're on version and you use the version app or you go to our webpage, catlinchurch.com, our Facebook page, you can find a lot of resources about some of these things that will go a lot deeper than I can right now. But one of the best things we can do if we want to kind of change our address and live on the, on the solid rock of Jesus, we've got to get to know him. And the best way to get to know him is through his word to read it, to want it, to study it, to understand it. We've got to trust it, meaning we choose to release control of our life and choose to take God at his word. And that leads us really to kind of, uh, kind of the other side of that coin is that we yield to him and we yield to it. It's one thing to know what the word says, but at some point we have to yield, to it, yield our hearts to it which is really hard in our culture right now because I think we all know it to be true. I think we all know it to be true. Is that we live in a time in which the culture is pushing hard against the truth of Scripture. The culture is pushing hard in a lot of places and ways. And in many times, in many cases, Christians, we find ourselves kind of yielding to culture and kind of doing what culture says and kind of going the road of culture. 
because we don't want to have a collision. And so we yield to culture instead of Scripture. If we can't do that, we mustn't. And fourth is we have to live it. We have to do it. Listen to what Jesus says. Anyone who listens to hears my teaching and follows it, or some translations say puts it into practice. So anyone who listens to my teaching and does it is wise. So Jesus says the best way to live a life on a firm foundation is to know him, to know his word, to yield to his word, and then when his word speaks, we do it. We change course. We do what he says. We live what he says the way he says it because we trust him. Following Jesus and trusting his word will not prevent us from facing difficulties. 2020 has proven that. Trusting Jesus doesn't mean life will be easy, but it does mean that we will be standing on a foundation that never shifts or changes or crumbles or fails. And that's a life I want to build or that's a foundation I want to build my life on. And that's a challenge. Jesus is giving us the choice. Which will we choose? Here in this room, I think many of us have made the choice. Many, hopefully online, have made the choice. But I'm, I'll, I'll implore you to consider. If you have come in today and you have found that you have built your life, we have built our life on anything other than the secure foundation of Jesus, we need to change our headdress. We need to shift over to the firm foundation I've seen this to be true in my life, but I've also seen it to be true up close and personal with some other people in my life. I want to tell you a story, and we'll be done. Um, this story is actually, I've probably told you before, but I want to tell you a story about a, a gal named Candy. Candy, that's her name. Um, Candy was, before I met her, Candy was not a believer. She wasn't a Christian. I didn't know her when she wasn't a Christian, but, but, uh, but, but when I got to know her, she'd tell you about her story. She had lived a rough life. A lot of rough things had happened to her. She had made a lot of rough choices in her life. And she talked about how she had built her life on just about every other foundation you could try. She had tried to try just about everything in the world that you could try to make yourself happy, to build a foundation, all those things. And all those had failed. And, and by the time I met Candy, she had only been a Christian, she and her husband, a couple of months. But to this day, I've never met anyone so passionate about her faith as Candy. I mean, when Candy spoke, she spoke with passion. When Candy worshipped, she worshipped with passion. There was never a time where we were ever together where she would ever just sing a song. I mean, she was always in. She was adding words. She was adding praise Jesus. I mean, she was after it, which actually in, in God's sense of humor, or at least in my sense of humor, I think God's too, is it's pretty funny because at our church, she, she sat or stood right during worship like this most exuberant person ever. She sat next to a guy. This is not actually his name, but this is what I called him, Mr. Cranky Pants. Um, Mr. Cranky for short. I mean, this guy never smiled. I don't think he knew how. I'm not sure. He probably loved Jesus, but I couldn't tell it. And so I just thought it was awesome because he uh, would be there, and it always looked like he wanted to be somewhere else. But he ended up getting stuck next to Candy, who wouldn't be anywhere else. And so she worshiped with passion. She talked to people about Jesus with passion to the point sometimes she, she unintentionally maybe came across a little abrasively, but not intentionally. And this woman loved Jesus. And she had built her life on a brand new foundation. But she didn't know when she became a Christian that that foundation was going to be tested in a massive way. A year or so or two after she became a Christian, she went into the hospital in the fall um, for what was supposed to have been a routine surgery. Doesn't matter what it was. It was supposed to be routine. They do, they do thousands of them, you know, and it was supposed to be routine. But instead of going home the next day, they said, hey, you've got a, you got a fever. We've got some concerns. And, and they, they just couldn't really figure it out. So they kind of, you know, threw a bunch of medicine at her and finally got her home. And a few days later, she's back in the hospital. And she spent just the on off, on off, hospital home, hospital home, hospital home. And, um, and so they started to figure out, oh, no that somehow during the original surgery, something had gotten nicked or whatever, and there was now infection. And so now they're like, oh, no, we've got to deal with this infection. This drug will do it, and they send her home. Well, it didn't do it. Well, the, this new drug will do it and send her home, and it didn't do it. Hey, this surgery, this other surgery, this next surgery, that'll do it. Two or three surgeries later, in and out and in and out to the place where she finally spent more time in the hospital than at home, to the point where she finally was only in the hospital. Fairly young gal, really. They kept praying, hoping that she would get better. Her spirits never really darkened or dampened. 
I just happened to be with her husband. He just happened to be at the church office when the doctor called. They were planning another surgery for the next day. But I could tell from the other guy, from the guy, the husband, the conversation didn't go well. And he said, I don't know what to do. He said, the doctor said that, that I need to get there and the family needs to get there right now. It's just a matter of time. So Emily and I and he and a couple others, we, we hop into cars and we fly to the hospital. And, and she's still awake. She's still with it. But, but you can tell that the doctors have already told her the news. She knows now that, um, that she's not going to make it. She's going to die. Nothing they can do. In fact, I don't even think they have any, any um, buttons or um, you know, uh, any of the, the equipment set up anymore as they just let her be with her family in the last hours that she had. Again, I don't know what to say. What do you do when you know it's coming? There's nothing we can do. And so at some point, I had the bright idea of just saying, Candy, what can we do? What can I, I don't know what to do. True story. She says, can we sing? Can we sing? And I said, Candy, I, 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 I'll do it anything you want. I'm not, I'm not much of a singer. I didn't say that part, but I'm like, whatever you want me to say. What do you want to sing? And she goes, I want to sing my favorite song. Maybe you know the song. Lyrics start this way. Well, everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing, but let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations, my Savior. The song Mighty to Say, she goes, can we sing that? And so I grab my phone, we find it online, and we sing in that room, Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. And a few hours later, she was gone. How in that moment could she have such peace? It's because she had built her life on a foundation that wouldn't fail. And when it was tested in the, in the worst of the storms, it stood firm. He's mighty to save. Friends, this morning we're going to end a little bit differently. We're not gonna, I'm not going to just pray and then we're going to get out of here. We're going to do something different this morning. Hope you bear with me. As I want to ask a couple questions this morning, and I just want, to, I want us to think, I want us to contemplate. That's something the church sometimes forgets to do. A couple of questions before we go. And then we'll have a song uh, that will come up on the video that we'll sing together. A couple of things is, do you today have that kind of peace? Do you have the peace of candy? Do you have that kind of peace in your life today? And if you do, I would spend the next couple of moments celebrating the Lord on whom you've built your life. But another question, and I think we'll have them on the screen here, is have there been any recent storms in your life that have revealed some faulty foundations? Maybe it's just COVID. Maybe it's the fear and the struggles and the things that have come up from that. Maybe you just find yourself a little bit afraid and you find that maybe your foundations have been faulty. Would you be able to face such storms with the same peace and hope? And is there a need to choose a new foundation for your life? You can take a screenshot of that if you want to. You can jot those down real quickly. But then in just a moment, we're going to have just some music playing. And I just want you to spend some time with the Lord, considering those. And during this time, if you find that you, you're not sure that you have that kind of peace and you would like it, you would want that kind of peace, I'm going to stick around this morning. We'll, we'll socially distance talk. Um, we can reach out online if you want to. You can reach out even this morning still on Facebook. To say, I want to know I, how to have that kind of peace. I'm going to pray, and then there's going to be a song uh, that kind of plays as we consider these. Father, this morning, I, I thank you for being a God on whom we can build our life, a present, knowable God. I thank you for the fact that, that even in the storms, even though they come, and although you don't always prevent them, you still allow us to stand firm when we stand with and on you. 
Father, I pray that we would build our lives on the Jesus who came and lived and died and gave his life for us on the cross. I thank you for the fact that, that we have hope of everlasting life, not because of what good we've done, but because of Jesus and the good he did on the cross. And I pray, Father, that you would allow us to, to be reminded that you are the cornerstone on which we build your word and your work and your cross are the cornerstone of our life. May we, may we live on you. May we, hang on, may we hang on to you. May we never step away. Hold us no matter what we face in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, again, take this time to consider, and then when the words begin to play and when the song uh, plays, you can sing with us, and then we'll be dismissed. Church, if he is your cornerstone, let's stand and, and sing that to him. And if he's not, let this time be an encouragement. Let us reach out to him, maybe for the first time, sing together.
Rest in His righteousness alone. Faultless stand before the throne. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the same. Church, I love you. It's so good to see you again. Let's continue to, to live with him as our, as our foundation uh, today and every day. Uh, we'll see you soon. Amen. Amen.